Max, I've been obsessed in my life the question, why is there something rather than nothing? I talk to physicists, they tell me quantum mechanics generates universes, quantum tunneling, quantum foam. I talk to theologians, they obviously say God. But I can imagine a world without God. I can imagine a world, where did quantum mechanics come from? You've said that mathematics is the ground of everything. So how can you justify that? I too can imagine a world without quarks, a world without quantum mechanics and so on, but I cannot imagine a reality where two plus two is not equal to four. So mathematics has this unique and uncanny property of seeming to exist with independently of anything physical. And this is an old idea. Plato was obsessed about finding all platonic solids, as we now call them, these regular shapes, the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the icosahedron, and the dodecahedron. And he found that they're exactly five. And I'm quite confident that any alien civilization in our universe or any parallel mm -hmm. universe who start thinking about this are also going to find that there are exactly five of them. You know? In that sense, we don't invent mathematics. We discover it. In fact, I have a colleague, David Vogan at MIT, who has a huge poster in his office of this beautiful structure called E8, which he's dedicated much of his life to studying. And it, he feels that this exists out there in a sort of platonic sense. And we physicists have now, by studying our physical world in great detail, found that it can be extremely well described by exactly a mathematical structure. We're not sure quite which one it is yet. That's why we argue about quantum gravity. But if it, if it is described by a mathematical structure, that will exist in exactly the same way as E8 and the dodecahedron. We didn't invent it. We discovered it. And, and, the, and these mathematical structures, like the dodecahedron, are timeless. Right? They don't exist in space and time. There are some mathematical structures that have space and time in them, like the one called Minkowski space, Einstein's space time. And since they're not in space and time, they cannot be created and they cannot be destroyed because it requires time. This, these are called abstract objects, and there's an infinite number of them. Many are mathematical. There are also rules of logic and other kinds of things that no matter how much we want to get rid of things out of reality, we can get rid of the quantum mechanics, we can get rid of God if there is a God, we do all those things, but we can't get rid of these abstract objects because there's no way that they can be there. That's the benefit of your theory. That's a wonderful characteristic to, to answer the question why there is something because you, you cannot not have mathematical objects. They're necessary. You can't get rid of them. Exactly. But here's the problem. Abstract objects have no causative power. They can't interact with things. That's the definition of them. So you have oh, this wonderful uh, the group of things that you have, but they're impotent. Yes and no, I say. An abstract structure like the dodecahedron or a uh, three plus one dimensional pseudo Riemannian manifold, blah, blah, physics structure, it has no causative power, of course, over any other mathematical structure because they are totally unconnected to each other. However, if we are part of a mathematical structure. Now, what does that mean? If we are part of a mathematical structure, if we are actually part of Einstein's space-time, this four-dimensional structure with okay. some other mathematical stuff in it, you know, then to us within it, we actually perceive different parts of the mathematical structure causing things in other parts. By looking at sort of the ground floor of the space-time, you can calculate with equations what the second, first floor, second floor, which we, we humans call later times, must be like. And we therefore say that what happened earlier caused what happens later. Uh, there, but this is one perfectly valid way of looking at it. Another equivalent way of looking at it is just to say that there's this beautiful information encoded in the mathematical structure so that if you know what's going on in this corner of it, you can also infer a lot about what's happening there. Uh, that's entirely valid. That's what science is all about. But that's starting after the fact, after we have a world, after we have a lot of some things and then we're using mathematics to see it. If we're starting with nothing, you have to use your abstract mathematics to generate stuff, and you can't do it. But you, by using the phrase starting with something or apply, implying that there is some sort of uber time outside of all these mathematical structures, so first there was no cube, and then the cube somehow popped into existence. The nature of the cube 
is that it just exists. Like, like 2 plus 2 equals 4 isn't a relation that just popped into existence, you know, three years ago. Or yeah. it was always, it, it's a timeless relation. It's a timeless relation. So in this sense, our full reality had no choice but to exist any more than 2 plus 2 had a choice about what it was going to equal. And yet, and this is really the beautiful idea of Einstein with time as a fourth dimension, if you are part of a mathematical structure with this four-dimensional space-time, we will feel as if things are changing within it and as if things that happened earlier are actually causing things which are happening later. Even though an equivalent mathematical way of, of viewing this is that just that this mathematical structure obeys a certain equation. You know, by looking at what's over here on the map, you can calculate what's going to be over here in, in, in the future.